Good morning, it's Mr. Prentice here, and today I wanted to talk about dealing with formula and dealing with formulas, uh, whether it's the subject of the formula or finding the unknown if it's not the subject of the formula, and I'll explain that now. Um, so firstly, I just wanted to point out that formulas are really easy to use if the pronumeral that you're trying to find is the subject of the formula. Okay, so what is the subject of of the formula, that's the first thing. And that means what this is, is when we write a formula, so just say we have um, a equals pi r squared. Okay, I started with this, a is equal to pi r squared. So that is often seen as area is equal to pi r squared. Um, the subject of the formula is the, is the pronumeral that is by itself, normally written on the left-hand side. So we can see that the A is by itself, so we say that A is the subject of the formula. So it is the one that the formula is talking about. Okay, so it is the one that we normally would find. Now, these equation questions to find that are really easy because they only require three steps of working or three lines of working. And you always have to show the three lines of working. Okay, so if you get a question like this, you must just say firstly what the formula is. Area is equal to pi r squared. Okay, you should, I'll put the arrow here, and I should say always write the formula. Now, I know it's just written in the question just above it. However, when you're in a test, you're often not given the formula. You might just be given like a circle and ask to find the area and therefore you should state that because there could be, a, could be a mark allocated for you realizing that you need to use this formula. Uh, the second step should always be to substitute in uh, your working or your, your numbers. So it says find A. So we're trying to find A and we're given that R is 6.5. So our next line should be to substitute what we know. So our A, well we keep that the same, so area is still the same, and then we've got pi times 6.5 squared. Okay, so I, sub, I, I always write the next step is to substitute in, and then the, the third line should be what we've just put in our calculator. So I should just quickly just type in calculator, and bring it on the screen. So we can just type in our calculator, pi, so remember it's shift, and then the button down the bottom, there's pi just there, pi times 6.5 squared. Okay, so that is what we should write if we are finding the subject of the formula. It's 132.73. Uh, realize if it was area, um, then we would write, you know, square units if it was an area question uh, because of, I haven't even been told it is area um, the answer would just be 132.73 to two decimal places and I could put approximately equal to if I want um, because I did round off and I could even write 2dp after it but I just wanted to just show you um, if it was an area question make sure you write like square centimeters or square millimeters or something in that regard. Uh, I'll give you another one. Uh, this one I just put down as two unknowns. It says in y is equal to 5a minus 2b. So hopefully you know what the subject of the formula is. Okay, so y is the subject. So the formula is, to, is generally used to find y. So in this formula, find y given that we know the other two. Okay, so we hopefully would recognize we use the uh, three lines of working. So we go y is equal to 5a minus 2b. Okay, that's what we're subbing into or substituting into. I now I'm going to replace the a with 3. Okay, remember this is 5 times a. 5a means 5 times a. So it's not just 53, it's 5 times 3. So I generally replace 
with brackets, okay? And then minus two times by negative five as B. Okay, now this one here, realize that if you've got a negative two times by a negative five, this is, there's times there. So this is gonna be negative two times negative five, which is actually plus 10. Okay, so I could put this on my calculator, but I'm going to get y is equal to five times three, which is 15, and then plus 10. So it should be 25, okay? So I didn't trust my calculator. Let me see if it does work. I got five. I don't even know if I, if I do five times three there, so it's 15, see? So I'll just start again, five times three minus two times negative five. Let's see if that works. See, 25, it did work, okay? Notice I used the negative button there in brackets instead of using minus. I don't know if that would make a difference. No, it didn't make a difference. I don't know if this, the minus button or the negative button made a difference, but either way, we should know in our head with our uh, magnitude questions for that. Okay, so they were the two easy questions. Let's look at, I'm gonna do a few other examples about our next part here. Okay, so please get this down. It says, however, we need to use our equation skills if we're trying to find a pronumeral that is not, um, now the subject. Okay, let me just change that. That is not the subject. I'll just, I'll just write not the subject of the formula. Okay, when I say not the subject, uh, it's not the subject of the formula. Okay, there's two ways to do this. Um, this is the way we're going to use. We can substitute substitute in the known values and then we'll use our equation skills to solve and work it out. Okay, the alternative way is to actually rearrange it and, and it's a thing called change the subject of the formula. Okay, and when we change the subject of the formula, we'll get a new equation. Okay, so I'll mainly use this one, but I'll show you both. So let's have a look and see what we've got here. So here's the first one. It's circumference is equal to two pi r. Let's get this calculator a bit. Circumference is equal to two pi r. Okay, or c is equal to two pi r. Now, hopefully we know that in a circle, that's the equations. But it says, so we write the equation now. C, actually, please write it to the left because we have to use both methods. C is equal to two pi R, and it says find R given that C is 100. So I'm now going to replace the C with 100 here. And I'm now finding R. See, I didn't just straight away, I can't just type it in the calculator because I'm finding the one that's not by itself. Okay, and to do this, let's have a look at my equation skills now. Hopefully... I can see this. what this is, this is two pi. Remember, pi is just like 3.14, so it's just a number, okay? So it's two pi, two times pi is about six point something, and then times by r. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to divide this side by two pi, and I'm going to divide that side by two pi as well. Okay, so my right-hand side, I'll get R, right, because it's 2 pi R and I divided by 2 pi. Okay, so the two the twos cancelled out, we replaced with one and the pi is cancelled out, so I'm just left with R. But the left hand side now is 100 divided by 2 pi. Okay, so 100 over 2 pi and that gets me 15.2 nine two to two decimal places. Okay, fifteen point nine two. And it's approximately that. So use the squiggly equal sign or use our equal sign with the dots above it. But I'll don't just want to leave it like this. I want to say R is approximately fifteen point nine two. Okay, so that's the way that we would do it. Notice it was not just three lines because I had to solve the equation here. Um, I just want to put the right hand side, I said leave some space, because if we want to rearrange the equation, 
just say I had I started with 2 pi r is equal to the circumference. Okay, I just wrote it the opposite way. I just swapped the left-hand side and the right-hand side around. I What did I just do? I divided both sides by 2 pi, and I would get r is equal to the circumference over 2 pi. This formula is a true formula that you could always use. The radius of a circle is the circumference divided by 2 pi. This is a formula where r is the subject instead of circumference being the subject. So this is a useful formula. It's just we don't normally see it like that. We normally see c as the subject. However, you know, if you had 10 questions to do that asked you to find the radius, then you may as well just use this formula and then you could just do the method one like we just did with the three lines for this formula. So start with this formula and then just go through and do those. Sub it in and then get the value for r. Okay. I hope my sound's not being too loud. It looks quite loud here. Uh, EG2. Area is equal to pi r squared. Okay, I firstly want to notice that it might not be area is equal to pi r squared. Um, so, you know, most likely is, of course. But I just want to recognize that we've done solving quadratics earlier. And this here, r squared, it's a quadratic. Okay, so when we're going through to find this, find r, given that a is 50, so I replace the a with 50, and I want to find r. Okay, let's solve, let's do go through it and solve this. I can see it's pi times r squared. There's a little times there, isn't there? So I'm going to divide the right side by pi, and I'm going to divide the left side by pi. Okay, so I'm going to get 50, where's my, oops, there it is there, 50 divided by pi is, oops, syntax error, go to it, oh, times 10, do I stuff it up, shift pi, okay, 15.92, it was at the same thing, so um, 15.92, okay, so so that's, that's equal to r squared. Okay, what I just want you to realize, remember when we, when we did this, um, when we solved quadratics, it's not just the square root of 15.92. Okay, we're going to take the square root of both sides, yes. r is going to be the square root of 15.92 as one of its answers, but just remember when you solve to this equation, r is going to be, if we square root this, plus or minus 3.99, okay? So R should be plus or minus 3.99, okay? Yes, if I knew it was area and radius, then of course the radius would have to be positive. Mariah and Brianna, can you please leave? I'm recording. Oh, can we do the Pokemon game? Can you go downstairs? Um... R is the, uh, now I lost my chain of thought, R has to be the positive value uh, if it's radius, okay? Um, so I just put this to two decimal places for that. Um, notice that if I wanted to do it the other way, I would say, let's have a look, pi R squared is equal to area, or area is equal to pi R squared. I will divide both sides by pi. So r squared is equal to area over pi. And then I would find the square root of both sides. So r is equal to plus or minus the square root of area over pi. Okay, so this is our formula that r is the subject of. Now, of course, if this was an area question, um, then it would just be r is the positive, so it's just the square root of a over pi. Um, I just didn't, didn't. I just wanted to use it for both and remind you that if you do ever get x squared is equal to something, then it's plus or minus the square root of something. 
to solve that. Uh, two more examples I'm going through. So the next one is the area of a trapezium. Okay, it's half of the height and then times by a plus b. So let's have a look. So this is our formula. Okay, area is half the height times by a plus b. Didn't I say go downstairs? Go downstairs, please. Um, the okay, so this is my formula. Let's let's go through and substitute it in. Find a, find this value, given that uh, the area is twenty. So I replace a with twenty. Okay, h is five. So twenty is equal to five over two. Uh, find a and b is seven. Okay, so I substitute them in. And then I use my um, algebra skills to solve this. Okay, my equation skills to solve it. So let's have a look. I want to multiply both sides by 2. Okay, it will get rid of this 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Times by 2. Times by 2. Okay, so I get 40. On the left side, okay, and this side, instead of 5 over 2 at the start, now it's just 5 times a plus 7. Okay, I divide both sides by 5. Divide by 5. Okay, 40 divided by 5 is 8. Okay, so 8 is equal to a plus 7. And then... I would take away 7 from both sides. So take away 7, take away 7, so a and 1. Okay, so a is equal to 1. Okay, let's have a look and see. This is a pretty much saying it's a trapezium. Let's have a look. I'll draw you the picture and show you what it actually is talking about. But it's saying that if you have a trapezium, Okay, and it has a height of 5, so this perpendicular height is 5, and the area is 20, so it was 20 square units is the area, and the base is 7, okay, that's 7, then this parallel length, because these lengths are parallel, it's a trapezium, this one we found has to be 1. Okay, so that has to be 1. That was the thing. So the question was, what is this? What is this A that makes this an area of 20? So it was 7, 5, and that had to be 1 as its answer. That's what we found. Um, if we want to change the subject of the formula, let's have a look. So H over 2, A plus B has to equal to A. I, would, I times both sides by 2. Okay, so 2a, I divided by h, so a plus b is equal to 2a over h, and then I took away b. Okay, so it's a is equal to 2 times the area over the height minus b. Okay, this is now making it so a is the subject of the formula. Okay, my final example, given that t is equal to v plus 5 squared over 2, find v given that t is 24.5. Okay, I just made up this formula. Uh, so, hopefully you should know it by now. You write the formula down. Okay, that's the one you'll be told in your, uh, in your earlier stages, but in year 11 and 12, you won't be given the formulas. And they're the complicated ones. Okay, I find, I want to, given that t is 24.5, so I replace t with 24.5. Okay, always do that as its own step, because there could be uh, marks allocated to any of these things. Okay, I would times both sides by 2 now. Okay, because I want to get rid of this 
half of v plus five, uh, 5 squared. So I double the right side and just get v plus 5 squared. And I double this side as well, so 49. Okay, 49. I now want to get rid of this squared. Okay, so I'm going to square root that side. I'm going to square root that side. So I'm going to end up with, they look like shocking square root symbols, but I'm going to end up with the square root uh, plus or minus the square root of 49, which is plus or minus, minus 7 is equal to V plus 5. Okay. And therefore, I would take away 7. So V is equal to minus 5 plus or minus 7. Okay, so there's actually two answers for this. There was two answers. You could write that down as V is, if it was minus 5 minus 7, if it was minus 5 minus 7, then that would be negative 12. Or the other answer would be if it was minus 5 plus 7, which is 2. So there was actually two answers uh, for this, and I'll show you. So just say V was negative 12, then I would end up with negative, negative 12 plus 5, that's in the brackets, and then I squared, so that's 49, and 49 answer over 2 is, is there, 24.5. Okay, or the other answer could have been if it was, the, if V was 2. So I could, you know, go through and go 2, uh, brackets, 2 plus 5 squared over 2. Okay, so that was 24.5, or if I had replaced it and the answer was negative 12, then that was also 24.5. Both of them gave the same answer. I hope this was uh, helpful. Actually, I just didn't write the sub change the subject of this formula, but you could do that uh, in extension if you want.